In today's video, we're going to be removing the ABS actuator from a Gen 2 Prius, so that's years 2004 to 2009. However, the principles will be similar with other vehicles. And the ABS actuator on this vehicle is located underneath the inverter, which is this right here, just through the back down there. So the tools for the job, we don't need much to be honest, a standard socket wrench here, some extensions, quite important because there are some bolts that are hard to get to, and at the back of the inverter and everything like that, there are some awkward bolts which don't line up with these, so I recommend a U-joint, it's quite paramount to the operation, and that way when we wrench these out, we can wrench at an angle and we won't have a problem. All the parts I'm going to use uh, for this whole job, I'll link in the description below. So before we get going, how do you actually know if your ABS actuator needs replacing? You know, this is an awkward job and you kind of want some clarity in this before you actually take it out and replace it. So when you first start the car, you put the key in, turn the ignition, you hear a slight clicky slash buzzing sound which comes from the ABS actuator just behind here. And that's actually the pump kind of priming and building pressure in the uh, brake line, so that's what that noise is for. However, if that noise continues and continues, it can't really build up the pressure in the system. Depending on the severity of the issue, it might keep continuously making that noise or it might come on for 15-20 seconds, go off and come back on again. So it's an issue with the pump inside there. You might have an ABS light on your dashboard here. Now the ABS light could be a number of things, but if you get a scanner, now it has to be a special scanner, not a standard o OBD2 scanner. It has to actually read the Prius codes, and this can indicate a specific problem with the actuator itself. So it could be C156 or C1391 or both. And it could be something like accumulate a low pressure or abnormal leak of uh, actuator pressure, something like that. And that is usually, you know, a high percentage chance that your uh, ABS actuator is doomed. And that's what we're going to remove today. So before we get on this job, there's a couple safety things we need to do first when removing and playing around with this inverter right here. So let's make this job a little less daunting. What is an inverter? Now an inverter, have you ever had one of those little boxes you plug in the cigarette socket and it gives you a house outlet for example? Well that's an inverter, just a smaller version than the one in the Prius right here. What the little one does, it converts the 12 volt, well, you know, around 12 volts from the car's battery and gives you a standard house outlet which is AC voltage, not DC voltage like a car battery. So it's really just a DC to AC converter, depending, you know, and a few other bells and whistles as well. Now, in short, the one in a hybrid car, this inverter right here, is responsible for boosting the voltage from the DC hybrid battery. Now, the hybrid battery is around 200 volts, well, 201.6 to be exact on this one. And it boosts it up to 500 volts AC, something like that, in order to actually run the motor. And when you press the brakes on the car the you know the operation is reversed that's really what the inverter does now with the inverter it can carry some residual you know voltage power and whatnot and that can actually cause you some damage even when the car's off so what we need to do is make this safe for us to work on and i'm going to show you how to do that now so this is a junk vehicle, I'm just using it for educational purposes, which is why it looks like this, but I will show you how to make this car safe so we can work on and around the inverter. First thing we're going to do is disconnect the 12 volt auxiliary battery which lives under a panel right here, and to do that we only need to disconnect the negative terminal here. So it's either this bolt here, or an easier one to get to is this 10 millimeter bolt right here. So we're going to use our socket, get the 10 millimeter bolt off here, and wrap this end with a cloth because we don't want it grounding out accidentally so when we remove this we want to isolate this from the body or any exposed metal so just wrap it with a cloth and leave it there that's the 12 volt auxiliary battery disconnected and the reason we do that is because we don't want the car to accidentally you know kick off start or anything like that it's just a safety precaution and that way the hybrid battery can't possibly start or anything like that so that's why we do this now so with that removed, we can go on to the next item. If you're going to work on the hybrid battery or near the hybrid battery, it's best to remove the service plug, which is this orange plug right here. 
The orange service plug here is designed to remove the hybrid battery from the rest of the system so it's isolated. If you're working on the battery itself, remove this plug and wait 5 minutes before servicing it. If your car gets into an accident, first responders usually remove this plug, or at least they should, to prevent any unsafe things like fires or electric shocks. So to remove the service plug, we just come over here, lift up, so grab a finger here, lift upwards, pull downwards like so and then pull to the left and that will remove the service plug so it's going to be a lot safer to work near and on and this is what it looks like so now the car is safe to work on we're going to remove this cowl here it's only five clips one here one here one here one here and one there. If you don't have a special tool to remove the clips, just get a flat head in here and pull them out very carefully. They'll come off no problem. And then we can remove the cowl out of the way. So let's start with these two 12 millimeter bolts here. There's one right here and one right there. Next, we're gonna disconnect this harness right here. A little tricky, a little awkward. Get a small flat head in between this orange part and the green part so right there and we're just going to lift upwards and that will bring the green tab up just like that and separate it from the orange piece underneath now the green thing's pulled out just push down on the orange part right here as hard as you can and the whole adapter will loosen just like that and be disconnected Next we're going to remove this yellow harness right here. You pretty much just grab it and pull it off right here. It has a unique locking mechanism there. Relatively easy to do. So now we're going to get the last 12mm bolt which is at the back here. It's through here. Let's see if I can get it. That one right there with all the sort of dirt around it, that's the one we're going for in the top left of the shot. And this is why our U-joint is quite important here, and that allows us to get that one out. So with the trickiest bolt removed, it actually gives us a lot more play now. We can grab these brackets and bring it towards us so we can get more hand room when disconnecting these connectors here. So the two big orange connectors at the back here, there's just a little tab right here. You just push in and they both pull out. There's a top one and a bottom one. Now with those disconnected, we can come around the front here and undo this bleeder bracket right here. That's for the little bleeder valve there, if you're curious what that was for. And the bracket is right here, 10 millimeter. that one bolt there. So now we have a couple big connectors actually going into the inverter here, and the only way to disconnect those is to undo the bolts holding it down inside. So we have to pop this top panel off here. Now this is lots of 10 millimeter bolts. You can see one here, one here, one here, all the way around the lid and all the way around the back there. There's a couple back there that you'll need like a slim wrench, but because we've got a lot of play now, you can kind of maneuver it around to get the room you need to get those back ones off there. So we're gonna remove this cover. For the back two, I'm just using a very small box and wrench there, and that will crack them, and then you can use finger power to get them off. So once they're cracked, they're all good. And the last one here is this uh, little star-shaped one right here. You can use um, an Allen wrench, Allen key, or something like that, or a little socket like this. If you have, don't have a star set, then maybe dig around for one of these multi-screwdrivers that come with the bits here. They tend to have them too, and that'll get that open no problem. So, a word of caution before we take the uh, lid off here. Now, we have made the car safe by uh, pulling off the service tab of the hybrid battery and disconnecting the 12-volt battery as well. However, there may be some residual power in here that could cause us damage. You do want to play it safe. You may want some proper rubber gloves, you know, check there's no holes in them, wear them when working inside here. It's just a good safe, um, you know, safety precaution. This car's been sitting over two years, so I'm pretty satisfied this is going to be fine. But I thought I'd mention that before we take the cover off. So let's start with this corner here. We're going to disconnect three harnesses, which is this one right here, this one here, and also this one right here. And that will free this large line in the top right corner away from the inverter. So with those disconnected, we're gonna come over to the bottom corner here and undo these three 10 millimeter bolts right here. 
if you're unsure whether there's a voltage in here you can actually test these bolts with a multimeter uh, and put it on DC volts and just double check you know just to be sure and then we can go uh, proceed with these three and also these three at the back here again all 10 millimeter so with the 10 mil bolts removed from the front and also the rear here we can remove the bracket bolts here there's just two for each harness so here's the first harness one there and one there again 10 millimeter and down here one right here and one just down there for the underneath harness there so with the bracket bolts removed you can just disconnect this harness from the rear right there and we can do the same for the bottom harness down here as well. Just grab it and pull it and it should disconnect from the inverter. So to remove the inverter almost completely, there's three more harnesses. There's one right here, this black one. There's one here, which is underneath this one here. And it just pulls out, you can press in the top. And there's also one right here. So if we just grab the inverter now, the only thing it's held on by are these coolant lines here, as it has its own little sort of coolant overflow here. So that, when working on the ABS actuator, which is right there now, our first sight of it, we can actually just swing this out of the way and leave it connected to these coolant lines. That way we can get in here and we don't have to bother draining the coolant or anything like that. So we can swing this all the way over there and then we can get access. Now before we continue getting this ABS actuator out, I've put a tarp under the car, something that will catch uh, residual brake fluid that might leak down, it, you know, it's just nice not to get it all over your driveway. So the first thing we're going to do is um, unbolt this little fuse box here, there's two 10mm bolts right here, you can see it houses fuses and whatnot. Uh, so we're just going to remove this to get clearance to one of the bolts that holds in the bracket which holds the actuator in. So there's three bolts holding this bracket on that the actuator sits in. The first one is the trickiest one. We're going to get that first and get it out of the way. Now back here, in the center of the shot, you see the bolt on the nut there, right in the middle. That's a 12 millimeter. And we're going to get that one off first using something like this. So a couple of long extensions and then a little U-joint on the end. And that should get that off no problem. So you can see in the center there, that's that nut off there. So the next one right here, we're just going to remove this harness by pushing in here and that should pull straight upwards. And then we can take off this 12 millimeter bolt right here. And the last bolt we're going to do for the bracket is this one right here. It's a 12 millimeter right in the center of the shot there. Now we're going to lose some brake fluid, so have your tarp or cardboard, whatever you have underneath ready. Um, we're going to disconnect maybe this pipe first right here, so just get some pliers on here, slip the uh, ring down and then pull the hose off. It will start draining out, so you'll either want a hose stopper or um, something to catch it in, anything like that. So we're going to take this one off now. So next we want to disconnect some brake lines, they're all 10 millimeter right here. A crescent wrench set is a good thing to have, I don't unfortunately have one. It's just the same as a box end wrench but the top is cut open here so there's a little gap and that allows you to uh, easily undo them no problem. Uh, otherwise you'll have to resort to this end and get them off that way. If your car's scrap, you know, you can just use some pliers and cut these lines but you know, it's, it really depends on your circumstances. So let's get all these brake lines off. So all the brake lines have been disconnected there. You can just pull them out of the way. Be careful with the non-flexing lines. The last thing you want to do is rupture a brake line. Uh, next, we're going to disconnect this harness. I believe that's how the ECU talks to the actuator. So it'll start snitching and giving you codes. Uh, to get this off, uh, get a flat head, insert it just behind the white piece and pull towards you. And that will allow you to just pull this all the way out. And then you can just pop the harness off to the left, which is quite hard to do with one hand. And there we go, that just disconnects there, you can just push that out of the way. So moving that harness, that reveals one more brake line in the top there, again 10 millimeter, we can take that out. 
Okay, now we're going to just remove this bolt right here, it's 10mm, and that will allow us to swing this bracket out the way. At the moment it's clamped onto the piece we're trying to remove. Once it's been removed, that can just swing out of the way. Be careful because it's connected to your low side AC line here, so you just want to be really careful with that, it doesn't flex, so that's what you need to do. So what we want to, to do now is disconnect this assembly here from our bracket which is clamped onto our actuator here. So we just need to remove this 10mm bolt right there. There's also one more bolt through here. Just there in the centre of the shot, the one that's kind of wet around it there. So with those two 10mm bolts removed, this bit is nice and free now. Um, we just need some clearance really now, so the easiest way is to just disconnect this hose here with some pliers and pull this hose off, then we can sneak it out this way. Alternatively, you could undo this plastic hook here and this sensor, and then it can fold this way instead. But we'll, I'm going to go with the, the first route here. So if dis disconnecting that line there, you'll lose about a quarter of a cup of coolant, something like that, not much at all. Um, again, you have two options of doing it, the choice is yours. So the next thing we're going to do is remove this 10mm bolt right here. And that's just a bracket that holds the collection of these brake lines together, and that will free that from the actuator. So with that removed, we can just move that downwards, just like that. So the last thing we want to do is unbolt the left side of this assembly here away from a little bracket harness here. So you see where these two hoses in the middle of the shot here are? Underneath those two there's a bolt right here. It's 10 millimeter, and that will remove this whole hose bracket assembly from the left hand side. Once that last bolt's removed there, just push the bracket out of the way, then we can grab this here, the whole thing, and slowly wheedle it out of the car very carefully, paying attention to the unflexible brake lines and the low side AC line. We don't want to rupture those, whatever happens. So let's remove the actuator from the vehicle. And there it is. Now the reason I chose to remove it on the whole bracket here is that um, normally you can remove the bolt here, remove the one just down there as well, but the problem is the one on the back is just almost impossible to get to. That's that one right there in the center of the shot there. Then if you can do that, you can sort of lift this up and push it out that way, uh, but you still have to undo that bracket there. So that's why I chose this method of uh, removal here. So that's the end of the video. As I said at the start, it's a disassembly video and removal video. If your purpose is to replace it, then, you know, reverse of the procedure to get the new one back in, put the inverter back in and everything like that. You know, it's pretty much straightforward. The only thing you need to do is bleed the brakes. But for the purpose of the video, this is the removal. That's how you do it. It's the quickest and easiest way. Just make sure you get those U-joints. That's pretty much key for this. So U-joints uh, and the ex socket extensions as well. Those two things are key to get this. Then it's just nuts and bolts, basically. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing and also sharing the video. I hope it helped you. Take care.